Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and in this video we'll start the mechanical setup of the car by installing the dual pole, dual throw switch. We'll replace the old switch that came with the car with this new switch. We need the new switch because it can control two circuits for us at once. In this image you can see the power switch that we've installed. This switch is a little bit different than the switch that came stock with the machine. This is a dual pull, dual throw switch, which means that we can actually engage two circuits when we turn the switch on. The reason we need two circuits is that there's one circuit for powering the motors and then there's another circuit for powering the Arduino. Here's an image of the Arduino Uno. I pulled it from this URL here. The image shows all the different pins that the Uno controls. So these pins up here are the digital pins, which means that when you turn them on, they give you a full 5 volts, or when they're off, they give you no voltage. I guess you can run some of these pins as analog as well with some special setup. These blue pins down here are the analog pins, which means I can control the voltage between 0 and 5 volts. Notice the 9 volt pin here and the couple of ground pins. These are the pins that we can use to actually power the Arduino. What we'll do is we'll hook these pins up to a 9 volt battery through the switch that we're about to show you how we mount. Here's an image of the Adafruit motor shield that we're going to use in this project. I need to show this to you now so that you can understand the mechanics on this board. But also I'll give you a couple other pointers here that'll help you along as we go. Notice that this board clamps into the Arduino board what happens is there are pins here that sit in the sockets on the Arduino board and then the signals from the Arduino board are propagated up into the motor shield board. Now you'll notice that there are holes associated with the pins. Each hole corresponds to a pin so we can get the same signal in the hole as we could in the pin. You know that this board controls a couple of DC motors which is how we'll use it. We'll control a couple of DC motors you can also control a couple of servos, which we'll do as well. And this is a stepper motor. We won't be using a stepper motor in this application, but we could if we wanted to. There's enough control with the Arduino, with the Adafruit motor shield to be able to do that. What I do want to show you though, is this connection right here. This is the connection for the power that powers the motors on this board. So the nine volt battery will power the UNO board down here as well as all of its electronics. But we'll use this connector up here to power all the motors. What we'll do is we'll connect this connector to the three volt and a half batteries that the original car used to power the DC motors. We'll run that through the same dual pole switch that we used to control the nine volt power as well. And with that, then we'll be able to control the DC motors, uh, even the speed and the direction of the motors through the motor shield, as well as the servos if we also want to use those in our application. Here's the top view of the car without the circuit board. You'll notice that the hole where the switch goes is missing. This was the original switch. I removed it from the circuit board and it would have gone right there if I can get it in there. So you can see kind of where the switch belonged at one point. But this switch won't work because as we've noted we want a switch that will control both circuits. So let's remove this switch and we'll replace it with a different switch. Notice that this switch has twice as many leads on it so we can control both circuits. So what we'll do is we'll try and place this switch into the hole where the original switch was here. It's a little bit tight and so you can kind of see where it belongs. One of the problems we're going to have is that the switch is impeded by a couple of these studs here that we want to remove. I'm just going to take a drill and drill that's with a bit big enough to drill those studs out and I'll just remove them this way. It's kind of a tight space and you have to hold the drill very straight to be able to do this. Be careful not to go through the bottom of the car as well. So we'll just kind of remove those this way. Get out the little scraps there. 
Looks like I'm pretty close, but not quite there. Let me try and clean it up just a little bit. And there we go. I'm not pushing very hard on that drill because I don't want to go all the way through the car. There. There we have it. And we see that the switch fits in nicely in the place of where the original switch was. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to drill some holes for the mounting screws for the switch. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to stick a pin in the holes where the mounting screws go and then I can use that mark that the pin leaves as a guide to show me where I need to drill. This is a little bit tight and the plastic is fairly soft but uh, it's a little tough so you do the best you can here to try and estimate right where you're going to need to drill. So there's one pin hole and then I'll try and stick one in the other side over here. Let me see if I can get at it. Remark this one here a little bit better just to make sure that I've got a real good mark here. Okay, you can see the pin that I'm using there. It's actually just a little nail, uh, bigger than a pin. It's got a little bit of a head on it so I can push on it. So I'll mark this side as well. Now you can see the marks where I need to drill the screw holes. So I'll take a little drill bit this time and I'll drill in there and make some holes for the screws that I can use to hold the the switch in place. And there we go. That should take care of it. Now I ought to be able to fit the the switch in there. Clean it out a little bit so I don't have any debris in the way of the switch. Now I can drop the switch in there again and I ought to be able to line those holes up with the screws on the other side here so I ought to be able to put a screw in and start to tighten it. So I'll finish tightening this screw up and it looks pretty good. Let's work on the second screw now and see if we can get that in and tighten. So here I've got the second screw in. I'll tighten this up. Get this screw nice and tight in here. Now I need to go back and double check the first screw here, make sure we got that good and tight. Had to loosen it a little bit there for a second to get the other screw in. And we see that the switch works. We'll clear out the debris and we're ready to go. In the next video, we'll install the line sensor, the distance sensor, and the leads for the battery. And then we'll have all our mechanical work done. We'll be ready to start wiring the car together. Remember, if you want to get a kit that has all the parts in it, you can find it at swarmus.com. We look forward to working with you on the next video.